Hey, 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 how are you doing? Welcome back to my channel, good people. My name is Sana Mugeshe. I'm back with part two of conflicts in relationships and marriages and how to resolve and handle this conflict. This is part two. If you haven't watched part one, please do part one. Do watch part one. Uh, have you subscribed? Are you new in this channel? Welcome. Feel welcomed. My name is Anna Mogesha once again. And Anna Mogesha, in case you, you are new in this channel, Anna Mogesha is a counselor. And Anna Mogesha has a passion to talk into couples. Anna Mogesha has a passion to make a difference in a relationship, in a marriage, and in family matters. And yes, so welcome. If you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe to this channel. If you like this type of videos, if you like this type of stuff, where we buy, we talk about, we make a difference in relationships, we make a difference in marriages, we make a difference in houses and in individuals. Thank you so, so much and feel free to subscribe. Why haven't you subscribed? Share so that it can get so many people and thank you so much. Without any further ado, let's go direct to the video. I hope you have subscribed. So yes, without any further ado, let me go direct to the video of today and the topic of today about conflicts and how to resolve conflicts and how to handle conflicts in a relationship or in a marriage. I began by saying, please, if you haven't watched part one, do watch and see those different conflicts that are very common in relationships and in marriages and how to resolve them. So I had talked about number one and number two. I talked about um, that all these conflicts that I listed and I talked about, one thing that brings conflicts on top of those conflicts is communication. So I took communication to be the one that will help us resolve all these, um, all these conflicts, bearing in mind that this communication is also a part of the other conflicts but if these conflicts are resolved properly through proper means of communication understanding each other then we are good to go anytime we are going through a challenge in form of a conflict communication is going to resolve all this so number one we talked about the patterns that brings conflicts through communication that is communication patterns and number one we talked about avoiding conflict number two we talked about being defensive and now we are supposed to go to number three but before we go to number three i want to put it like this when you are defensive anytime we are trying to resolve a conflict when you are defensive partners do not feel as though their significant other listens to them. If conflicts are not resolved because of you, of one of the partners or one of the spouses being defensive, the other partner will always feel like the other significant other listens or cares about them. So and this unresolved conflict continues to grow. Remember, I also raised a point why you find so many killings in the marriages and the relationships because these conflicts that remain unresolved continue growing and piling and piling until they turn to hatred and anger. I also talked about number three that I was talking about being right. In solving conflict in a relationship, there's nothing like you are right or you are wrong. Wrong and right being of the other partner should not rise up. Because we said we are unique. And when we realize that our way of thinking and our way of our point of view is more right than the other, then that brings another conflict. 
Don't demand your partner to see things the same way as you. Let's listen to each other. Let's know that ours may be right, theirs may be right, but we agree to disagree. Do not take it as a personal attack if they have a different opinion. If I have a different opinion, do not take it as a personal attack. In most cases, when you're resolving these things, you, you, you realize that when you are talking about it, this is... Um... Hi. Yes, I think now it is not going to cut my head. Eh? Uh, thank you so much. I hope you're still with me. In most cases, when, when you realize that when you're resolving these issues, and I want you to drop a comment and tell me about it, eh? let me know whether it happens to you. In, in most cases, when you're resolving these issues, when my point of view or the other point of view of somebody else, some individuals will take like you are fighting them. You don't listen to me. You don't even see like I care. You know, just because you want me to see or, or you want him or you want her to see her way of thinking like you while we are supposed to be very unique so what am i talking about i am talking about different opinions of people if you are, her opinion is different from his opinion and you realize that you are not agreeing in this you disagree to agree but you should not take like it is a personal attack there is nothing damaging like to determine that you are right and the other one is wrong by the way you look at things it is so damaging in a relationship that i'm always right you're always wrong i tell you to think like this you don't think like this because you all think that you're right i am wrong and it brings the conflict to be so high remember still in this channel i've been talking about compromising if you will not compromise, if you will not forgive and forget, conflict will continue coming up, coming up. Because apart from love bringing you together, this love is compromising, this love is forgiving, this love is sharing, this love is loving. And so when we talk about this damaging thing of thinking that you're right, we have to compromise, we have to agree to disagree. Look for a space or a room of compromise. Agree to disagree. Otherwise, those conflicts will remain unresolved forever. Both points of view are valid. Your way of looking at things, my way of looking at things are valid. Period. None of us is perfect. Only God is perfect. Let's run how to guard our mouth. Because the Bible says that whoever guards his mouth has knowledge. A foolish becomes wise by keeping quiet. A, a man, this is the Bible, not me who is saying it. A man who is quick to anger, a man who has temper can act foolishly. And we act foolishly because we don't listen to each other. We act foolishly because our point of view, our point, our, our way of looking at things is very different. Oops. Somebody is at the road and listening to me, but it's okay. I am in my, in my office and I can see them watching and listening, but it's okay. I hope you guys, I am encouraging. I hope I am inspiring. So let's look for a room for compromise. Let's agree to disagree. Point number four. I am talking about um, communication patterns that will not resolve conflicts. And remember, we resolve these conflicts through communication. Also remember that communication is a part of conflict. Yes. But the same, same communication can be a tip to resolve all the other conflicts by communicating the right way. 
The other way that you're not going to resolve your conflict, conflict is playing the blame game. If you start blaming each other, you will never resolve the conflict. So avoid playing blame game. Handling conflicts through criticizing the other. You said this, I said this, you don't listen to me, I don't listen to you, I told you you did not hear, you are the one who did it, you are the cause of everything. I want to advise you on this. Whenever you are resolving the conflict and you've realized there's something that is not going wrong, right, something is not going right. For example, if you're talking about quality time, you don't spend time with me. You sit down and you're talking about it, you've taken a, a space somewhere, you've gone out to, go, to resolve your conflicts, you've realized that he's not spending time with you, she has no time for you, and you want to discuss about it. Avoid using you. So these are two points that I want to put together. Playing the blame game and generalizing everything. Because of time, eh? Generalizing everything. I don't want the video to be so wrong, eh? Let me start with playing the blame game. View a conflict as a way eh? of analyzing a situation. Don't start blaming each other. And I will say this. There is nothing damaging and nothing draining like talking without solutions. There is nothing draining like having all the conflicts unresolved. One conflict after the other. To a point that you will never agree, you will never disagree. You are just there. It is so draining. It is such a negative energy. So view any conflict that comes in your way, any challenge that comes in your way as an opportunity to analyze a situation, assess the needs of the, each other, the two of you, assess the needs of each other and come up with a solution. That way, remember it's not a win-win game, it is not a lose-lose game. It is a way of understanding each other. And any time as a counselor, I tell, I, I tell people that when, when, you, when you take a conflict as a way of understanding each other, when you take conflict positively and say, Yenyewe, we are different, unique beings. And so these things will come, will keep on coming. Challenges will keep on coming. We should endure through the proper communication. For these people who are brain games, admitting personal fault weakens their credibility. I will say, I will never say I am wrong. You will always be the wrong one. Because when I say I am wrong, when I take my fault, then my credibility is attacked. How about the other one? How are you going to resolve this? The other one that I'm talking about is generalization. Some Individuals will resolve conflict through generalization. And they make generalization so much. It is you. You are the one who caused all this, and that is why we are going through these financial problems. We are in financial crisis because you did A, B, C, D. So then now, I am the one who is right, who is wrong. How are I going to resolve it? Will you generalize it and put a full stop and say, and... Anna, you did A, B, C, D, period. You caused us to be in this situation, and so you should know how to resolve it. Have we, have we resolved the solution? And this is where I always talk to people and I tell people, whenever you are talking about this conflict, never generalize, never use, you did, you never did, I told you, 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 you. You've already put the blame and generalized everything to the one you are talking to. You always, you never, I want you. So already you've already generalized. You are not even resolving the issue together. So never use the word you. Before generalizing everything and telling him and telling her that you did, you did, you did, stop and think about whether the statements that you're putting on him or her are true. Avoid bringing up past conflicts. And that is why I'm saying it is very important to use the
the tactics of resolving any conflict as it comes. The first point that I said is a wrong way of communication is avoiding the conflict by not speaking about it, by not resolving it. So that when you resolve this conflict and another one comes, you will not talk about the first one. When you talk about the first one, it is a way of changing the topic. We are talking about our financial problems and then you start bringing the children in. I told you, this child said ABCD, you never did everything. So you are changing the topic, so avoid it. Finally, I want to talk about uh, the final way of resolving a conflict and the final way that you bring a conflict on top of the conflict. So I'm using both to give you the way of doing it. Eh? Character attacks, attacking the personality of the other. You remove your clothes and you leave them under the bed. You don't even remove them. You don't even put them in the bucket because those are the small, small conflicts that we may have. And you may hear people uh, 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 disagreed on that and uh, they backed and left just because he leaves the clothes under the bed. Just because when he takes his tea, he does not, I don't know, do A, B, C, D. That is what I'm calling the character attacks. So you look at the flaws, personality flaws. He does this, he does that. And you start labeling them. Imperfection of the people. Blemish of the person because of his character or her character. And you attack them. And when they raise that, you call them a complainer. These attacks create negative perceptions from the both. Because already I know you are personality flaws. I'll always use it to attack you. And so, I already have a percep perception over you. You already have a perception over me. So, anytime a, 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 a conflict rises and you want to resolve it, you always look at that weakness. Remember, respect for the other person, even if you don't like their behavior. Respect them. And finally, you forget to listen. If you are a good listener, it will be very easy for you to resolve a conflict. Let's learn to listen. Let's learn how to resolve our conflicts and let our relationships work. Let our marriages work. Thank you so much for listening to the end. Why don't you share this video to the end? Share, share, share and let's help and make a positive change in someone's relationship. And that is my passion. Thank you for the few who are watching. I hope I am re-energizing your marriages and God is giving you hope in your relationships. Thank you so much for watching to the end. Once again, my name is Anna Mugeshe. This video will be on next week. Today is on 6th Wednesday. The video will be out on 13th or 14th. So tune in, do share, do watch the other series, and God bless you. Bye.